Welcome everybody. My name is Sharon West of Sharon West Fine Art. For those of you who don't know me, I am a palette knife artist obsessed with texture. So in today's project, I'm going to show you how I created my Peace Angel using modeling paste, palette knives, painted paper, and even my Cricut. So stay tuned. Supplies I used include modeling paste, acrylic gel medium, fluid acrylics, gesso, jelly plate and impressibles, plus a variety of mark making tools, palette knives, a wood panel, scrap paper, and a Cricut. For this project, I'm gonna be using a wood panel. I really like to use these panels whenever I'm applying texture, medium, or any kind of uh, material that I need to apply pressure with my paintbrush or apply with a gel medium because they don't create any kind of sag that a regular uh, canvas would, would create. So, but I always do like to prime them with good coat of gesso. I really like to use the black gesso because whenever you know I'm covering anything, if a little bit peeks through, it usually adds a little bit of interest to the piece. So I'm going to start by gessoing this wood panel. So for today's project, I'm going to start with a mini tutorial on the gel press. This is a gel press. It is a gelatin surface that you use to apply paint to paper. And since painted paper is such an important part of my mixed media art and it'll be an important part of this project, I thought it would be useful to sort of give you a quick overview of what the gel press is. It's something that is used to mono print, which basically means to print single prints of designs, shapes, textures onto paper. And the beauty of it is you can really use any paper that you have hanging around the house. You can use um, old music books. I like to use, this is deli paper that came from a restaurant. Um, I have got old menus. This is printer paper that came off the printer when I was changing the printer settings. The amounts of paper that you can use is pretty much endless. I like to stay away from anything with a shiny surface. Uh, but other than that, um, any thickness that you like um, or may be required by the project is great. So I'm going to demonstrate how to use this. So there's a lot of ways to make different textures on the jelly plate. You can. What I like to do is with my Cricut make my own stencils. So this is an example of a stencil that I make myself. Um, here's another one. So these can be used as masks to either take paint off or, or apply paint on. Uh, these are a couple more sort of homemade stencils. This is something called Punchinella. It is the reverse side of uh, sequins. So you've seen sequins on dresses and whatnot. This is something you can purchase and um, you can make little cool textures, cool circles. Another um, Cricut stencil. Bubble wrap is cool, makes these cool shapes. Uh, this is a lemon bag. So you can use this, makes some cool shapes and textures. Um, toilet paper roll. Basically anything you have around your house, you'll be looking at it in a different way. These are rubbing plates and these create really cool textures as well um, for your paper making. So I'm gonna incorporate all of these. So, and then this is something that's called Impressibles. It's created by Gel Press. It's just like this, except this one has the shapes already built into this. So I'm going to be using mine and this and these to create cool looking papers to use for our project. Uh, I'm going to start with some of my papers. I'm going to do a solid colors and then go to town on layering progressively darker so that we have lots of cool shapes and textures for our project. I use these the Utrecht fluid acrylics. Are, have got a lot of good pigment to them and you can layer them very easily and they spread very easily on, on the jelly plate. I don't really care if some of the print shows through because it just adds interest once this paper is layered. So there's a pretty light blue. Do a couple more. Now some people are very sparing with the paint uh, on their jelly plate, but I am very liberal with it because it actually adds heft to the surface of the paper and makes them stronger and more interesting. So 
do a couple layers here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this up and we'll see what we can make Okay, so now that we're finished making paper, I've organized them all in order of lightest to darkest, and we're gonna start laying them down on the surface of this board as our background. And what I use to lay them down is the acrylic gel medium. I really like to use the mat for this purpose because it doesn't get sticky after it's dried. And then at the end, I'll spray it with a gloss gel to make the entire piece glossy. So let's get going. Okay, so now that the canvas is finished and all the paper is glued down, I'm going to work on cutting out my words for the background. For that, I use my Cricut machine. Okay, so now that we're finished collaging all of our paper on the background, we're going to start working on our angel. And for that, I use acrylic modeling paste with a palette knife. So we'll get started. Okay, so let's finish this piece. So where we're gonna start is by creating the dress of the angel with our painted papers. So let me look through here some of the pieces that we made, kind of like this one. I want there to be some contrast between the background and the dress. This one could be kind of cool. I really like this pattern that we made with the texture plates. Um, so usually I like to tear, but in this case, in these cases when I'm doing my angels, I really like to cut the edges so they're kind of clean. So 
So let me start by cutting this just in the general shape. And then I can adjust it. I like to just sort of use my fingers to feel around the texture here and get an idea of where to trim. This one's pretty close. I just need to sort of round out the shoulder part. I don't know if any of you played with color forms when you were a little kid, but I used to love those. So now what I'm doing is I'm dampening the paper so it's a little bit more pliable. And then I'm going to apply my gel medium. This is the matte gel that we used earlier. And I'm just going to apply it real liberally over the molding paste. See where I might need to trim. I do see right here. Just trim a little bit more away. And I like this bold pattern and the flecks of white that show through. Some good contact with this gel medium here. I'm always very liberal with it. And just sort of press it down with your fingers. See how the molding paste creates folds in the paper? I really like that because it makes it feel like maybe the fabric of the dress is folding too. So the next step is adding some dimension to these wings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my uh, gold heavy body acrylic paint and I'm just going to apply it real liberally right to my brush here and brush it over the, all, the, the whole wing and really work it well into these deep valleys here. so that I can create some drama. Okay, so this is the word piece that I cut out with my Cricut machine and then I painted it. So now it's dry. We're going to apply it to the bottom of this piece. So same method as with the rest of the paper. Just I like to dampen it. So let me get this word kind of wet. It's okay if it wrinkles a little bit. You know, this is all perfectly imperfect. Um, sort of lay it out here the way I'd like it to finish the piece and the way the words are attached to each other. So just sort of get a sense of where they're going to fall. You can manipulate them a little bit but they also are attached to each other so you're going to want to let it flow smoothly as much as possible. And then just apply it the same way you did everything else.
Thanks so much for being here today. I hope you had as much fun as I did watching this video as I did making this piece. If you'd like to learn more about me and my art, you can find me on Facebook, Sharon West Fine Art, also on Instagram, and on my website, SharonWestFineArt.com. Thanks again for being here.